Hello, my name is Maxin, and welcome to my Endless Space Disharmony Let's Play on my YouTube channel Celtic Gamer. This Let's Play will be played on the hardest difficulty setting, which is called Endless, and I will be playing on the largest map size with the maximum number of opponents. Just before I get into the game, I'll quickly show you the options I'll be using. Uh, if you want to see them in more detail, you can pause the video and check them out. Basically, the graphics are on the maximum settings. Uh, if the sound is a bit too loud, please leave me a comment and I'll turn it down in future videos. Uh, this is actually the second Let's Play of uh, Endless Space Disharmony that I've done. The Unfortunately, during the first Let's Play, I found a bug with uh, the f one of the factions I was using, the Sheridan. And it's uh, quite a serious bug. This recording's actually made just uh, a few days after the game has come out. Uh, the current patch is 1.1.4 uh, and uh, the only serious bug in the game at the moment is basically to do with the Sheridan which makes them nearly unplayable. Uh, during this current Let's Play though I will be using the Soas as uh, my faction and there's no bugs with them. Uh, I don't think there are any really any major bugs with uh, any of the other factions actually uh, There's still a few small bugs in the game, but that's to be expected because the game is only just out and The company that makes this game Amplitude are patching it all the time to fix those small bugs uh, Sheridan in the future when the once that the bug has been fixed. I'll probably go back to my first Let's Play to finish them off if the fix works retroactively. Right, uh, settings. I'll keep all settings defaults. Uh, and I think I'll have a different map this time last map I used was Spiral 4. I think we'll try the ov Ovoid map. Uh, the sp Spiral 4 map I think might have been quite an easy map or an easier map uh, because you tend to be isolated with one other faction in each corner of the galaxy I think when you have eight players. This map I think uh, there's much more chance of having multiple neighbours uh, if you're new to Endless Space, it might actually be a good idea uh, to watch the introduction, at least in my first Let's Play. Uh, that contains a lot of information about Endless Space. Space? Did I say Space? Endless Space. Uh, during this uh, Let's Play, though, I'll be covering the topics of the new expansion and going into detail about what effects they have on the game. What I like and what I don't like so much. Uh, because normally I would, in terms of picking races, I would pick a few and leave the rest random, but because the Sheridan have a bug, I don't know if the AI is affected by it as well. I've got a feeling it is. So I've actually I did the random dice rolls uh, earlier to figure out uh, what ra to do a random way of picking the races without having a Sheridan. Like I did, I rolled the dice. Uh, one to three was the top half and 4 to 6 was the bottom half and then I rolled the dice uh, picking 1 to 5 depending on which half it was and the 6 I'd re-roll so I think that was a fair way to pick the races randomly and 
during those rolls, oh, and I actually uh, decided that I wanted a, a few certain factions in the game. So I uh, only rolled for actually four factions. The factions that uh, weren't random were the automatons, the cravers, and the harmony. Harmony is the new race in the uh, Disharmony DLC. So I thought you definitely want to see them. And the Automatons have new ship models, so I also thought you probably want to see them if you're if you've already played Endless Space. And the random factions that was I selected were the His Show, the check my notes, the Pilgrims, and the last race was the Sophons. Right, uh, I think that's all the settings done. Endless difficulty, defaults, huge map, 8 empires, ovoid. Yeah, looks alright. Oh, uh, I've missed a faction. The United Empire was the other faction. Right, uh, it's all correct. Uh, there's an intro video now, so I'll be quiet during that. And I'll start the game. They were dropped, ages ago, onto a lifeless rock. Under orders from the Endless, they turned it into a paradise. They are called the Sowers. And they seek other planets to continue their mission. For one day, they are sure the Endless will return and the entire galaxy must be pacified for them. The Sowers will permit no living thing to hinder their holy mission. Okay, so that's the Sower faction. Right, uh, there's a new introduction to this harmony here. Uh, I won't read it out because it's quite long, but if you want to, I'll move the cursor down. You can pause if you want to see it in more detail. You might only be able to see it if you've got high resolution option on. This is uh, in 1080p, so you should be able to see it. If you're able to uh, view that option. Okay, so I'll dismiss that. Now, uh, before we start, I'll just save the game. I'll cut this bit out of the video and then we'll get started. Okay, so whenever you're starting a new faction, it's always important to understand what their traits are and what special text they have. So in the case of the sowers, they have the sower affinity. Basically you get less food but some of your production is turned into food. You have the xenobotany tech so you can colonize tundra. Metallic waters uh, on your home planet, I, I think it's just your home planet, you have plus one pr production and plus ten happiness. Plus one production is per citizen I believe. Space cadets, minus twenty science on system, it's a really really bad uh, affinity trait. Uh, tech research is always really important in 4x games. Uh, you've got the builder's trait, minus 20% interesting cost of improvements on Empire. 
This sounds quite good, but because of the sewer affinity, you tend to have a lot of production anyway, because you tend to choose uh, production in planetary improvements over food planetary improvements. So your buildings tend to get built quicker because of that anyway. So it's uh, kind of a even larger effect, uh, the improvement bonus because of that, usually. Uh, tolerant, colonizes all planets, minus 25% FIDS. FIDS is food, industry, dust, science until require tech known. Basically, that can be very useful, but often you would rather not colonize a bad planet early on because of the happiness uh, negatives associated with doing that. Uh, but sometimes it can be very useful. Dust recyclers, plus 10 dust per destroyed enemy command points on Empire. Uh, that's quite useful actually. Uh, it's a nice little bonus. Slow travelers, minus one movement on ships. Uh, that makes colonizing earlier on a lot harder. Uh, or a lot slower. Or at least, you know, a small amount slower. It can have an effect. Optimistic, plus ten happiness on system. When it says on system, I think it means all systems. It's not just your home system. And that's a really good bonus, actually. Okay, so that's the affinity traits. The Sowers are regarded as one of the weaker factions in the game, if not the weakest faction in the game. There's even a campaign on the Amplitude Endless Space forums to improve the Sowers faction. Uh, it was created when before the expansion. I'm not sure how much they've been improved since the expansion has come out. The attacks are certainly different, but the uh, race traits seem very similar to what I remember. Uh, the last time I played this game was around February, uh, and I have I've beaten the endless setting before about then, so I'm a bit tiny bit rusty. And obviously, disharmony has a lot of new stuff, but. I think I was doing well on my first Let's Play before I found that bug with the, with the Sheridan. Right, in terms of unique faction techs, uh, the orange techs are the techs that are unique. Apart from maybe these two up here, I think everyone has the unique ones on these. I'm not sure why they're orange. Uh, in the... Applied Sciences Technology Tree, which is the right hand tree over here. There are two unique orange techs, like I can see. Uh, you've got a production turned into food. Uh, can be useful, I think. And you've got a slight. I think this is an altered production build, and I think everyone normally has this building. But the sewers have more protection coming from that building. Uh, next, will yeah, they don't. Sewers don't actually have any military uh, unique techs, which is a shame. Uh, they do have a couple of good ships, though, which I'll mention in a second. On the left hand side of the tech tree, which is the diplomacy and trading tech tree, which covers economy as well. Uh, they have, I can see, one, two orange techs, two unique techs. Uh, there's a happiness improvement. I think everyone has that improvement, but I think. So is it slightly better? I think that it's a slightly more increased production, which uh, is definitely a theme with the sewers. Lots of production. Uh, they're geared towards a wonder victory or a military victory. I think it's said on the faction screen at the start of the game. Uh, and planetary landscaping, everyone has this tech as well, but this is slightly different. 
Uh, you get, I think the difference is you get plus production per population on planets with a temple. So that's basically the moon tech improvement which discover, helps discover temples on uh, stars. Now, most of the unique techs are within the exploration and expansion technology tree. Uh, all the factions have unique ships these days in Disharmony. And the unique ships have different abilities. Like for instance, uh, the hammer, which is the third class ship for the Sowers, has uh, module repair tonnage, a 30% reduction. The fourth ship is minus 30% support production module armor. Or well, production on support module armor, I should say. Uh, fifth ship, product, uh, minus 30% production on support module repair. And the largest sip, sh ship, did I say sip? Uh, production cost added to hit points. That sounds really strong, actually. Uh, the theme seems to be repair armor and hit points. And armor is basically hit points as well. So, in terms of defenses for the sowers, you probably want to uh, choose lots of armor improvements. They don't actually have a unique armor improvement, though, which is surprising. Uh, the first two ships for the sowers, uh, the colony ship and the scout ship, actually. I'll show you actually. Uh, in the military designer, uh, the colony ship, which is called Factory, has a minus 40% support module, civilian tonnage on ship, which is the same as most of the races. Most of the races have that. There's so a couple of differences. I think Horatio and Harmony are different ones. Uh, the Surveyor, which is a scout ship, has minus 30% support module armor, tonnage on ship. Uh, Right, so back to the unique text in the South Tree Exploration and Expansion text. They have all of the planetary, the normal planetary and lock in text, slightly different. For the Sowers, they remove the colonization penalty, which is minus 25% FIDs, and that, they have those on all of those uh, texts. The one strange thing I've noticed is Gas Giant. I'm not sure if you're able to colonize a Gas Giant from start or... and if you are... because it doesn't say and uh, gets rid of any minus like the rest. So maybe you can't with them, I'm not sure. Or maybe that's a... might be a bug, a small bug. Uh, apart from that they have a happiness bonus here. Happiness bonuses are always very good. Uh, I think that's about it. Apart from they have Tundra Transformation which I think that comes earlier for them. And the very, most unique tech for them perhaps is the Cryo High high grow systems which gives a massive eight extra fids on tundra planets normally most races tend to transform their planets to the top tier planets which are the terran the ocean and the jungle planets but in the case of the sowers it seems that it might uh, be more worthwhile to transform all their planets at some point to the Tundra planets because of that bonus there. Uh, and I think the reason why they get that plus five on planets is because the Tundra planets are tier two planets and they have minus five on planet normally. So adamantium, which you require to transform those plants, is very important for them. 
uh, and that's over here. So I'll be looking to get that at some point, definitely. Uh, the only problem with the have upgrading to tundra plants rather than the tier one plants is that the less the less of the tier planet, the less population you can usually have on that planet. But probably the fids bonus would make up for that. I think just about. Uh, uh, Effectively, long term, have smaller populations than the other races, though, probably. Because, because the Tundra can't fit as many uh, population on them. But that's uh, quite a small detail, really. Uh, okay, so I think that adequately explains the sowers. So, we are in a ovoid galaxy. Just a flat disk type galaxy. And I think all the races are spread around the mainly around the outer edges. And there's a group a cluster of uh, star systems in the middle for us all to fight over. I think there's a lot in that area. Uh, okay. We've got five different links to five different star systems. Uh, I'll just check out what heroes we've got as well. We can do that more easily through the academy option. So we've got... Wow, three administrators of various types. Well, we've actually got two of the same type of heroes. We've got admin commanders and admin adventurer. The administrator has actually been weakened, arguably, in disharmony. Uh, it used to have happiness bonuses as one of its skills or uh, potential levels, and that's been moved to the adventurer. So the adventurer is kind of a half. Uh, system, uh, planetary system hero bonus and half uh, ships these days. I'll show you now. Uh, Ventura, so there you go. Minister of Propaganda and those used to be in the administrator's tree. All the rest is ships. Almost all the rest. Uh, it's so we'll hire uh, probably him actually, he seems to be the best uh, as soon as we can, probably in a turn or two. I haven't seen this one before. Some of these have unique uh, bonuses, they're all based on their attributes normally though. I don't think this one has a unique one. This seems to be a craver, I think. Right, we'll come back to the, uh, the hero screen when we can afford them. Uh, so now it's a question of where do I send the colony ship and the scout. All the star systems have different habitability settings, which uh, makes tier one. Uh, the different tiers of planets more likely or less likely. We probably still want to... So we're probably aiming for tier 1 or tier 2 planets. 1, 2. Uh, there's a... Habitability chat on the Endless Space Wiki which I'll give a link to or put in the notes for you. I've got the uh, written down somewhere. So I can remember. I think the yellow stars are the most, but I think there might be one star type of star system that has a higher habitability setting for tier one planets. If I can find it. Right, yeah, white I think white stars are the most habitable, followed by yellow, blue, protostar, red supergiant, binary red dwarf, and white dwarf. But those change uh, based on the age of the galaxy I think. Uh, our galaxy is normal though. I chose I chose all the default settings. So based on that there's a white sun there. So 
because I think that's where we probably should send the colony ship. I'm said that we seem to be on the northwestern edge of the galaxy. And I think I want to head inwards to stop other factions or races from nicking stars over here. So I might send... I think I'll send a colony ship. No, I think I still I still send it over there and I send the scout down here. Uh okay, let's do that. Oops. Okay, so seeker can go here. It was actually in range so I could see the system. Tundra, Arctic, and Jungle. So that's quite a good system. Two of them are colonizable. Uh, and even that one has a bonus later on. Uh, for the sewers, because of the food affinity trait, you tend to want uh, planets that have high production and high food to start off. Uh, I think the jungle is probably just the better option. I think you get 30% of your... F uh, I'll check the tray actually. Yeah, 30% of production added. So, in this case... For the Tundra, for instance, 30% of that would basically be nearly an extra two food. So that would really be about a four food uh, per population. And this, that would be 30% of that is like 1.33, 1 so this would be five odd. So I think, because you want your plants to grow most early on, I think I'll colonize this first when I get here. Now it's just a case of whether or not I decided to send this colony straight to Bunda, so look elsewhere. Oh, and we've had an event. These stars uh, are events, basically. Exploration events, which are usually handy. Apart from when you get a pirate. Uh, and that's got one movement left, so we'll send that one. Okay, I'll send this one down here towards the inner part of the galaxy. And I think I will. The problem with Bendis is seems to be at a crossroads, which is good. Crossroads are the travel paths. But it doesn't have any resources. And early on, we definitely want to find some titanium for missiles later on. Another certain text. Um. I still think, yeah, I'll, I'm really tempted to send Colony there, but I'll send it to Bendis and colonize that jungle. Okay, so... Oh, we've got to select attack. Anyway, fusion plants is a no-brainer for pretty much every race, so I'll pick that. Especially the sowers, because they're desperate. They need production more than anyone to grow. And... We need enough... Oh, we need... Oh, planter exploitation. Normally I would pick food, but in Sower's case it's better to pick industry most of the time. And... We need enough money to hire a hero in a turn or two, or maybe three, can't get enough money.
tax rate uh, increases your food industry and science the more left it goes in general and attacks the more to the right it goes in general uh, I'm just gonna find the right amount I need 20 gold to hide a hero so nice to have five this turn gold Okay, I'm gonna do that. It means slower growth, though, that's the problem. I can do three. Right, I'm okay, I'll just do two turns. Um, okay, I've. I'm probably. I'm gonna cut these videos into. Uh, half an hour chunk so it makes it easier for me to upload to YouTube. Uh, I've no idea how long I've been doing this for to be honest so I think it's at least 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna call an end to this video now I think. Uh, this video has basically been more of an introduction. Uh, in the next video we'll get more into... we'll get stuck in and get some turns going. So, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Any feedback you want to leave me. Uh, and most importantly, please watch the next video. So, uh, thanks, and I'll see you next time.